exactly what non-chill filtered means because I'm not an expert. What I do know is that I really enjoy it. That looks like a good pour for this evening. a very, very strong flavor. It's in, it's intense. And I've described it previously as giving you a punch in the mouth. But I love it. I had a particularly heavy dinner this evening, lasagna, and I think this will pair nicely. So good. Before I forget, I want to give a quick shout out, and I haven't done this on the channel before, but I want to make mention of another YouTuber that I really appreciate and enjoy. That is because, this time I'm making this exception, because it is my son. His channel's name is Schmiz, S-C-H-M-I-Z-Z. Schmiz, and uh, he's a talented young man, and he is making YouTube videos where he uh, opens packs of football cards and talks about the players, and he's really, really into football, and now collecting football cards, and uh, is making some pretty compelling content, I think, so I will uh, offer up a link to his channel in the description below. Schmiz. Now, good job, my son. On to the whiskey. Uh, all right. 
as promised this evening. Nice and warm. Chapter 18 of Tuesdays with Maury. <clears throat> if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, I'm not going to take the opportunity now to catch you up on what's going on with the book. It would just be too much to cover. Chapter 18 is entitled The Eighth Tuesday. We talk about money. <clears throat> I held up the newspaper so that Maury could see it. I don't want my... Pardon me. I don't want my tombstone to read. I never owned a network. Maury laughed, then shook his head. The morning sun was coming through the window behind him, falling on the pink flowers of the hibiscus plant that had sat on the sill. The quote was from Ted Turner, the billionaire media mogul, founder of CNN, who had been lamenting his inability to snatch up the CBS network in a corporate mega deal. I had brought the story to Maury this morning because I wondered if Turner ever found himself in my old professor's position. His breath disappearing, his body turning to stone, his days being crossed off the calendar one by one. Would he really be crying over owning a network? It's all part of the same problem, Mitch, Maury said. We put our values in the wrong things. And it leads us to very disillusioned lives. I think we should talk about that. Maury was focused. There were good days and bad days now. He was having a good day. The night before, he had been entertained by a local a cappella group that had come to the house to perform and he relayed the story excitedly, as if the ink spots themselves had dropped by for a visit. Maury's love for music was strong even before he got sick, and now it was so intense it moved him to tears. He would listen to opera sometimes at night, closing his eyes, riding along with the magnificent voices as they dipped and soared. You should have heard this group last night, Mitch. Such a sound. Maury had always been taken with simple pleasures. Singing, laughing, dancing. Now more than ever, material things held little or no significance. When people die, you always hear the expression, you can't take it with you. Maury seemed to know that a long time ago. We've got a form of brainwashing going on in our country, Maury sighed. Do you know that they brainwash people? They repeat something over and over. And that's what we do in this country. Owning things is good. Money is good. More property is good. More commercialism is good. More is good. More is good. We repeat it, and we have it repeated to us, over and over, until nobody bothers to even think otherwise. The average person is so fogged up by all this, he has no perspective on what's really important anymore. Wherever I went in my life, I met people wanting to gobble up something new gobble up a new car, gobble up a new piece of property, gobble up the latest toy. And when they wanted to tell you about it, guess what I got? Guess what I got? You know how I always interpreted that? These were people so hungry for love that they were accepting substitutes. They were embracing material things and expecting a sort of hug back but it never works. You can't substitute material things for
for love, or for gentleness, or for tenderness, or for a sense of comradeship. Money is not a substitute for tenderness, and power is not a substitute for tenderness. I can tell you as I'm sitting here dying, when you most need it, neither money nor power will give you the feeling you're looking for, no matter how much of them you have. I glanced around Maury's study. It was the same today as it had been the first as it had been the first day I arrived. The books held their same place on places on the shelves. The papers cluttered the same old desk. The outside rooms had not been improved or upgraded. In fact, Maury really hadn't bought anything new except medical equipment in a long, long time, maybe years. The day he learned that he was terminally ill was the day he lost interest in purchasing power. So the TV was the same old model. The car that, that Charlotte drove was the same old model. The dishes and the silverware and the towels all the same. And yet the house had changed so drastically. It had filled with love and teaching and communication. It had filled with friendship and family and honesty and tears. It had filled with colleagues and students and meditation teachers and therapists and nurses and acapella groups. It had become, in a very real way, a wealthy home, even though Maury's bank account was rapidly depleting. There's a big confusion in this country over what we want versus what we need. Maury said, you need food. You want a chocolate sundae. You have to be honest with yourself. You don't need the latest sports car. You don't need the biggest house. The truth is, you don't get satisfaction from those things. You know what really gives you satisfaction? What? Offering others what you have to give. You sound like a Boy Scout. I don't mean money, Mitch. I mean your time. Your concern. Your storytelling. It's not so hard. There's a senior center that opened near here. Dozens of elderly people come there every day. If you are a young man or young woman, and you have a skill, you are asked to come and teach it. Say you know computers. You come there and teach them computers. You are very welcome there, and they are very grateful. This is how you start to get respect, by offering something that you have. There are plenty of places to do this. You don't need to have a big talent. There are lonely people in hospitals and shelters who only want some companionship. You play cards with a lonely older man, and you find new respect for yourself, because you are needed. Time to pause for a quick drink. said about feeling meaning, about finding a meaningful life. I wrote it down, but now I can recite it. Devote yourself to loving others. Devote yourself to, to your community around you. And devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. You notice 
this, he added, grinning. There's nothing in there about a salary. I jotted some of the things Maury was saying on a yellow pad. I did this mostly because I didn't want him to see my eyes, to know what I was thinking, that I had been, for much of my life since graduation, pursuing these very things he had been railing against. Bigger toys, nicer house. Because I worked among rich and famous athletes, I convinced myself that my needs were realistic, my greed inconsequential compared to theirs. This was a smokescreen. Maury made that obvious. Mitch, if you're trying to show off for people at the top, forget it. They will look down at you anyhow. And if you're trying to show off for people at the bottom, forget it. They will only envy you. Status will get you nowhere. Only an open heart will allow you to float equally between everyone. He paused, then looked at me. I'm dying, right? Yes. Why do you think it's so important for me to hear other people's problems? Don't I have enough pain and suffering of my own? Of course I do, but giving to other people is what makes me feel alive. Not my car or my house. Not what I look like in the mirror. When I give my time, when I can make someone smile after they were feeling sad, it's as close to healthy as I ever feel. Do the things that come from the heart. When you do, you won't be dissatisfied. You won't be envious. You won't be longing for somebody else's things. On the contrary, you'll be overwhelmed with what comes back. He coughed and reached for the small bell that lay on the chair. He had to poke at it a few times, and I finally picked it up and put it in his hand. Thank you, he whispered. He shook it weakly, trying to get Connie's attention. This Ted Turner guy, Maury said. He couldn't think of anything else for his tombstone. A quote. Each night, when I go to sleep, I die. And the next morning, when I wake up, I am reborn. Mahatma Gandhi. That's quite a nice sentiment to think about. And friends, that's going to do it for chapter 18 of Tuesdays with Maury from Mitch Album. And here's your daily reminder that if you're finding some value in these videos, if you're learning anything from these books, if all I'm doing is helping, helping you fall asleep, that's enough for me. I enjoy falling, to, falling asleep to spoken word ASMR videos, and uh, that's honestly the reason I decided to start this channel, is that I wasn't finding any other channel that was solely, completely spoken word videos. It seems every other artist has a lot of different triggers they like to explore. But uh, for those of you out there who enjoy falling, to, falling asleep only to spoken word videos, I'm here for you. I'll read you to sleep. It's my pleasure. But if you are getting some value out of these videos, please like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and uh, maybe leave a comment or two. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed chapter 18 of Tuesdays with Maury, and that you'll join me back here again for chapter 19 in the next video.